we have we don't have any new patrons this year. I mean this week. Yep. And Joey here he got moved up. He moved up to executive. Uh yeah, so I need to add him as an executive producer. Yeah. Just write Joey here. Here is um Michael Reeves still the latest patron then? Well, that was last week. Should I just not say our newest patron? No, we don't have one this week. Okay. You want to do it the week they come up? The week they show all right, up. all right, Bowie. Because every week, every week you're gonna be like, hey, Michael Reeves. <laughs> I, I screwed up so bad, Michael. I screwed up last week so bad, Michael Reeves. I want to do it better this week. I did not screw up. You Bobby. screwed up big time, man. No, I didn't screw the up. The people heard it. The people all heard you screwing up. I've not checked the comments. I'm going to have to go and check the comments on that episode. Uh, it wasn't really comments. It was people tweeting at me and, like, yeah. messaging me privately. They thought it they thought, Oh, pr private messages. They, they, thought, they thought you were... They thought the whole situation yeah, um, was hilarious. Bobby, Toby really messed up this week. No, 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 it wasn't that. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> that. No, they, they like the, uh... Yeah. They like the... They liked the that was, uh, it was funny. You yeah. freaking out and stuff. Yeah. It was interesting. You, you wind me up, Bobby. A what? You wind me up. You like to be wound up. Are we ready? Are you, are you recording? What's the rush? I'm just saying that. Do you want me to start reading it? Uh, we're, we're in the middle of a conversation. You're just like, all right, are you recording? Ready to go? <laughs> like, you. I'm sorry for being professional if this you, week, Bobby. you, dude, I don't want to talk to you. I thought we were Bobby, friends. we're about to talk for an hour and a half. It's all right, man. It's, it, I thought we were friends, but apparently, you know, it is uh, what it is. Bobby. Go ahead, you can start, you can start anytime right, you want. Alright, alright, fair enough. Toby, you can start anytime you want. You, you're getting there. You're get winding there. me up now. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I... Because you're, you. you're taking the Michael out of me. <laughs> you're taking the Michael out of you. What? What is the Michael? What, what is Michael? Mickey, you're taking the Mickey. What is Mickey? You know what that is, Bobby. I don't know what that is. What is it? Well, you keep doing it, did not you? <laughs> what? It's when you're, you're like... You're, it's another word for taking the piss. You're taking the mickey of someone. I have no clue what that means. Oh, my well, God, I don't know what taking the piss means. Taking the piss means you go to the bathroom, not... Oh. <laughs> It's like when you're you're deliberately annoying someone, and you're like imitating them. You're mocking them. Well, yeah, that's like a another term for it. Yeah, you're taking the Mickey. You take it, Mickey. Okay, go ahead. Every episode starts the same way, doesn't it, Bobby? Every episode. I see. Well, I, I'm trying to learn your. I'm trying to learn your accent, man. I'm trying to. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Why don't you come over to Britain then, and then you can learn it properly. This episode is brought to you by all of our patrons. To become a patron, head over to patreon.com forward slash make us better. This week's executive producers are Nick from Next Level Games, Joel Brooks, James Johnson, Joey Hare, Sheldon Benedict, Jesse Armstrong, Glocko Schaefer, and David Ray. You guys are really, really awesome. Thank you so much. That's that's Pep. That's Pep, Bobby. That's British Pep. In the bag. Take it to the bank. Okay. What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 of the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my second best friend in all the land, Toby Thornton. What is up, Toby? Where has this come from, Bobby? Where does what come from? The second best friend? Oh, I have, I, I'm sorry, I have a new best friend. My bad. You have a new best friend? Yes. Mike, Michael Drummy is my new best friend. What, what are you talking about, Bobby? So, Michael messaged me this week because he was concerned about me being in Florida. He wanted to make sure he was monitoring everything Tony was doing. You're not You're not in Florida. I know, but he was just he was checking on me because he thought maybe I was in Florida too with her. He didn't realize that I was back home. And, well, that um, shows that, so how much of a good friend he is. Well, he doesn't even know where you but, are, Bobby. But he reached out to me and he said, you know, I was, I was caring. He goes, I, you are my love. 
And I said, you know, I appreciate that. Don't tell Toby, though. And he's like, yeah, he just gets jealous. So I said, yeah, you know, I he's, he's very jealous of our love. But, you know, it is what it is. Well, I'm I'm very displeased right now, Bobby. <laughs> and we said you would be just... <laughs> you know, like, I actually invited Mike to come on the podcast, but he refused. You know why? Because he doesn't want to talk to you, Bobby. That's not the case. That yes, is, is, you're very wrong. That is not the case. Michael has, me and Michael have a deep, deep I love. can't believe you call him Michael. His name's Mike. His name is Michael. Please stop it. You're taking the Michael now, Bobby. You're, listen, like you're you're Tobias. That's that's what it is. Tobias, my name's not Tobias, Bobby. You're, it's your not my birth is, name. Your name is Tobias. No, it's not. Everyone thinks it is, but it's not. Bobby. Toby is Toby is the shortened name. Like Murray, Murray is Murray. Of course, you got that right. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll let me take you'll take a shot at Murray. <laughs> Speaking of Murray, yeah. He's he's a little he's a little miffed, I see. With the yeah. So as he what, should be, yeah. Is he moving? Is that the problem? No. I don't know I don't know whether he's just not updated his um address on his PayPal or whatever, because PayPal like stores multiple addresses and stuff, doesn't it? Oh, uh, so. so when he when he bought it, it put it to the wrong address. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming. Okay. Or unless he's not gonna be okay, wait, 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 wait. home when it arrives, I wait, don't know. Wait, wait, wait. That is, this is your brother. Yeah. Who you love dearly. Uh-huh. How do you not know what's going on? Because I don't talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Burn, I hope everything works out for you, Burn. That would be... Uh, Nobody uh, cares about me, Bobby. Cause no. I've got issues with my pre-orders as well. Why? I don't Wait, even, what issues I, do you I have? I told you. I've told you this already. No, Bobby. you didn't. You, I, you when I pre-ordered. Two pre-orders. You got yeah. one for me and one for you. So yeah. I guess mine's but, out the window now. But when I put those pre-orders in, mm-hmm. at the time, my card was valid. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think into the... I didn't see into the future because now oh, my card has expired. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I've updated my card details on PayPal, You'll be fine. and I, I think I pre-ordered one through PayPal, so... You'll be fine, because here's the thing, if you... So, this is how it is in the United States, because I had a yeah. very similar thing happen to me with Amiibo, yeah. and as long as the card number is the same, yeah, the pre-order went on that account. So, yeah. it'll go through. Like, if you cancel the account, then yeah, you're done. It ain't gonna work. Right, okay. But, as long as it's the same account, essentially, but they're just updating the card... Because that pre-order, that transaction was actually put through originally on the original yeah. card, they'll it, it, they'll work it out with the bank. It'll be fine. Well, I hope so. Yeah. You'll, be, you'll be fine. Yeah. Well, it's always about making it all about you. Always. Well, it, I'm the most important person in the room, Bobby. Let's kick this episode off like <laughs> we do each and every episode with our geek outs. Geek out! What are you geeking out about, Toby? I am geeking out about a really awesome YouTube channel. Called Northern Lion. I thought you could say the Nintendo Guru channel, but okay, go ahead. No, no, Bobby. I see how you are. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about that channel. Really? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, okay. No, we've man. got we've got a lot of very, very, very nice people that support us on Patreon, and those people care a lot. And, and even the, the people that don't support us on Patreon, it's not they even care about a lot. The Patreon as well. people, like, I, no, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying that of, people, we have some... people. Yeah, we have a great community. We have Nobody's saying we don't. Some phenomenal. Listen, this is why I have a great community because you flub it every time. The people know that I love them and I thank them for all the support. Look, Bobby, I'm just trying to mock you, but I accidentally mocked everyone else at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go uh, ahead. What, 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 yeah, go so ahead. This, this YouTube channel, Northern Lion, mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, they put up um, their like live stream footage of Player Unknown Battlegrounds, and basically every day they play it or well, they have like a session and then every day they upload one game one match and it's just amazing like because it's four, a four-man team mm-hmm. and you can watch their their gameplay of it and they have been i think there's like 160 odd episodes at the time of recording this and they have been on a roll lately they've they've been so good like their team communication is brilliant 
their their like banter with each other is really good as well and they're really funny and but they're really tactical as well so they're like really interesting to watch you know i just realized something yeah so when when you were recording before when you were when you were away from all the stuff i forgot that like the train the train is so much louder today is it yeah but i think it's because you're closer to the window right yeah, uh, it's, it's it's funny. It's just it, it just dawned on me. My bad. Sorry to interrupt your your little. It's all right. Um, so, so my, my thing is this though is here's a question for you because this was brought to my attention from a good friend of mine, my best friend in all the land. Um, but don't you get tired of watching? The, like, doesn't it spoil it for you? N- oh no, Bobby! Like, because every match is different. The way the matches play out because mm. it's it might be the same map, but the map's big enough and it the way that the circles get smaller and they change sort of positions it like they're always sort of funneled into different parts of the map and from different directions and stuff so every every time it's like it's really dynamic in that way it's never the same game this is the game this is the game that'll probably be the demise of pewdiepie correct uh yeah probably (laughs) yeah you saw it went down this week right yeah yeah god this guy he just keeps dropping the ball man yeah, yeah, he does. I guess when you have that kind of money, though, you really don't care. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, he won't have to work again for the rest of his life, regardless. No, yeah. So, I mean, it is it, But I think his whole thing is being controversial. Like, he, everything yeah, he does. He's always been like, kind of controversial yeah. and stuff all along. Um, it's like, you get comedians, though, that are like that as well, and they get away with it because yeah. they're funny. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, I'm geeking out about Metroid. Um, so the other day I got my, my new 3DS, I got the two Amiibo, dude, did you get them Amiibo? No, cause they're sold out. Cause Nintendo likes to put things up for sale mm-hmm. that nobody can buy. So they, they, they reveal things. They go, look at this really cool stuff that you're never going to be able to get. I got them. That's Nintendo's whole thing. You gone. I, got I didn't. They're, they're really nice. They're really, really. Nice. I've, I've given up on Amiibo, Bobby. Like, uh, well, you, you, can't, you, you can't. You buy gave them. up a while ago. Let's 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 get serious about this. You, you, just, you gave up a while ago. Because um, yeah, you can't you can't buy them, Bobby. So I, I have them right on my shelf over there. How did I not? How can I not buy them? Because if I have Nintendo them? is you know all over America with their Amiibo. No, UK. please stop that. Don't even don't even try Bobby, that. Bobby. You guys were the ones that could get them all the time. No yeah, matter. Yeah, I know. Where, but now it's the shoes. The shoes on the other foot now, Bobby. Yeah, well, you guys don't show any interest in them, and then all of a sudden you decide you, to wake up out of your slumber that you want them. I've always been interested in them, Bobby. You stop for a while there. Yeah, but I I was collecting. I'm still collecting the Smash collection. That's all I care about right now. Is finishing the Smash collection. For me, okay. Anyway, you, you're not going to hijack my 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 excitement. So the the 3ds is gorgeous. It really is. It, yeah, yeah, it is. It's not going to come out of the box, but it's gorgeous. It came out of the box for my unboxing, and then it went right back in and I, I put mm. it away. But I really, man, it is really really sharp. Um, and I don't really like playing with the XL anymore. No. So it does. I thought I might go to the XL for Samus Returns. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, regardless. But the Amiibo are really, really well done. Like, I, yeah. I'm impressed with how good these things look. Like, even Samus. Samus looks really good. Like, of course, the Metroid one is really awesome. It's squidgy, isn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, outer, yeah. the outer shell is, is like the Metroid. Even if, even if I could get one, yeah. I would never feel that squish because it yeah, wouldn't Yeah, because you don't take them out of the box anyway. Yeah. That's why you can't get them. Yeah. Nintendo, Nintendo of Europe is just like, you know what? These guys don't deserve these to, yeah. to, to, to have these things. So we're just going to cut it out. Um, I would love, honestly, if someone would like make a custom out of that. Where like the Metroid is attacking Samus, yeah, like, like maybe like on, on her, her face, yeah, yeah, like on her head or her back yeah. or something like that would be really cool. Um, it'd be pretty neat. Uh, so topic time. Hmm, I'm thinking you should go first. Yeah, and then, oh my god, dude, I forgot to do. Okay, did you not do my topic? I did your topic. I forgot to grab news news clips for uh. 
Oh, it's okay. For our, for our stuff. But you know what? This might take a while anyway, so let's just see where, where it goes. I've got some pretty interesting PlayStation news, though. So, so okay, go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll make anyway, the best of it. Yeah. We'll make the, I screwed up yeah. this week. We'll make the best of it, though. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, so next week, uh, 21st, I believe, the Tokyo Game Show starts. Mm-hmm. And it goes on for, I think, four days, two days business, two days I think public. The, I think the press, yeah, the press, the press conference <laughs> is, uh, I think the press conference is the 19th? For uh, no, I thought it was the 21st. Is it? I thought it was the 19th. I thought, okay. I thought it kicks off on the 21st. Maybe, who knows. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I just wanted us to come up with three PlayStation predictions mm-hmm. for Tokyo Game Show. Agreed, agreed. Um, go ahead, I'll let you go first. All right, so my first prediction. My, I think mine are all actually pretty safe. Of course they are. Um, I think these, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my first prediction Shenmue 1 and 2 HD. There was a rumor about this. I think it's completely true. And I think it's going to be announced as it's coming out in 2017. So sometime before Christmas. Um. So you're saying they're going to update it and be HD. Yeah, just HD. That's all. Mm. Because the thing is... Uh, Shenmue 2 was already HD for the original Xbox, I think. Oh, okay, okay. So they were just so the I don't, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, I think you're probably you're probably right with that, honestly. Um, hmm. Because the game is well, the game is probably another what year? You think off? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So they would probably like to do something like this to kind of build a little hype, but also yeah. like you know. Because people need to know the backstory as well. Because this is part three. Shenmue three is part three of a saga. Yes. And you, I don't think you can just jump into it like you can other games. Like they'll probably do. They'll, they'll probably do like a recap. You know, like some games they do. Oh, previously on Shenmue, like. But I think it'd be just a better thing for everyone to just experience it themselves. That's that would be that would be very interesting. That'd be very interesting. Um. Mine are kind of safe too, although I do have a couple that are stretched. But this first one is very safe, and I think that uh, Monster Hunter World will get a lot of time during the press conference. I yeah. think that Nintendo, or yeah, Nintendo. I think that Sony and uh, Capcom definitely want to try to build the hype on this game. Like it, it's predominantly been a handheld game, but I feel like they need to try to win back the masses over to Sony from, you know, from Nintendo and and all that, Mm -hmm. and and the handheld market, because that's where this is a little iffy, because the fact that it's not a handheld game. Predominantly, Monster Hunter in Japan has been very successful on handhelds, but it hasn't always done that well on home consoles. So, it's kind of interesting. So, I think they're going to want to try to showcase this and push this to the forefront over there Mm -hmm. and do what they can, so... Yeah, I think they're definitely going to show that a lot. Um, you know, I've got a friend uh, who we play GTA with, Alex, and he has been telling me how excited he is for this game. Like, he's like more excited about this one than he is the handheld ones. So, I think there's definitely an audience for it on console, just purely because it seems like they're sort of evolving mm-hmm. a bit more. Like, they've got monsters eating other monsters and yeah. they're living in like a realistic environment and stuff mm-hmm. so, yeah um so my next prediction is i think bloodborne 2 will be announced i disagree but go ahead I'll, I'll why don't you disagree that do you, do you think they'll save it for psx they'll save it for psx do you yeah. here's the thing okay so this is this is the hardest show to actually do predictions for. And the reason being is is that right now PlayStation is predominantly a home console system, you know, mm-hmm. and they don't like to show a lot of stuff that's like a western based thing. And this and and really the Dark Souls and and the Bloodborne type games are mainly I would feel more western than mm-hmm. that and I feel like they would like to save that for PSX. But you also have uh, what is it? The Paris Game Show, mm-hmm. as well between between those two. So I think there's actually two other shows that are going to pop up before P- PSX. I just have a feeling they're going to save that one. I feel like that's one that would get a huge pop, and they're gonna they're gonna want to keep. Well, that yeah, 
I mean, I was going to say maybe they'll just do a teaser for it, but I think they'll I probably just want to th- they'll just want to blow the lid off. Yeah, I think that's something where they just want to they exactly they just want to they want the place to erupt when when it yeah. comes out, and that's something I feel like in the West it's a much bigger game, and I feel like it's been heavily rumored right now. Like that's everybody keeps talking about it, like showing up all over the place. I really feel like this is the one that's gonna. They're just gonna hold tight on it and, and before they do anything. That's my gut. I could be wrong, but is that what you're thinking? You think they're gonna do a teaser? Um, yeah, I, I think that it'll be there in some form, mm-hmm. whether it's a full trailer or just a teaser. But yeah. Uh, my second prediction is Sony announces a Vita Two slash new handheld at T- TGS. Right, because I feel like if you're going to do that, that's the place to do it. Yeah, I mean that's their biggest audience that's, for handhelds. Yeah, for handhelds, yeah. that's their biggest audience. So I feel like because I've been lately feeling like they're going to try to go after the Switch market, and mm-hmm. obviously you need the handheld section of it to kind of work. So I feel like they may be. Pre- I, I feel like deep down they're prepping for a PlayStation Five somewhere. Mm-hmm. Pro- it'll probably be in an. I think you get PlayStation Five probably in the next four to five years. So, if that's the case, if they were to put out a Vita Two or announce a Vita Two now, and they're already working on the tech that those two can kind of communicate and work together and all that, then I could I could totally see them launching with the Vita Two first and then coming with the PS Five after that, like in a couple of years, and then make that whole announcement of where it is because. Technically, I mean, the Vita talked to the PS3 as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was out during the PS3, and yeah. I think that um, although they added the, like, uh, what, what was it, the remote play feature mm-hmm. to it, like, mm-hmm. I don't think that their plan was to have it connect to the PS4, so sort of built in, you know, sort of, yeah. I don't think there was, the plan was for them to talk to each other, like, so cleanly. Yeah. And I think that if they brought out a new Vita now during the PS4's life cycle, I think it would have to concentrate on talking to the PS4 rather than waiting for the PS5. Well, not necessarily. Like, they could try to, like, bring the Vita to to Japan first, let it kind of build momentum there, and then move out. But also, you could be right where it is going to talk to the 4, and maybe Mm -hmm. in that sense, it's talking to the 5 when the 5 comes Maybe that's their answer for Monster Hunter. Mm. Maybe they go, "Hey, you're able to." Yeah, that's a good call, actually. Yeah, I mean, you're able to like play this on the go, streaming. You know, that might get people excited in Japan. So interesting. Uh, But I I think we hear something about a handheld in Japan this time. Go ahead. What's your third prediction? My third prediction is the Resident Evil Two remake game will be shown off with a gameplay trailer. And you can play the demo right now. Ooh. That's heavily rumored as well. Um, Is it? Well, I, I've heard I've heard a couple of rumors about it um, that they think it's going to happen. And right now, it just feels like Capcom is doubling and tripling down on Resident Evil. It's weird mm-hmm. because Capcom does this weird thing where they make their games go away, and yeah. then when they bring them back, they just absolutely just flood everything with them. And yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, Resident Evil kind of went off the tracks mm-hmm. for a while. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil 5 was okay, but very action-heavy. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil 6 was just completely over the top. And the fans, like, I think it sold well, but I think the fans just weren't happy with it. Like, yeah. a hardcore audience for it. And then Resident Evil 7 was a big success this year. And they're re-releasing Resident Evil Revelations Mm -hmm. for Switch and everything, and they've got the DLC for 7, So, and they've got Remake on the way, so I think they're sort of getting back into the groove of what Resident Evil should be. Yeah. Yeah, I I, well, because, yeah, like you said, there's a couple coming to Nintendo, and then that, and then... I just... I don't understand the marketing behind it. It's almost like, we're gonna bring this back, but we're just gonna make you sick of it. That's how much we're gonna bring it everywhere. And it's like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I like that strategy. Because they did the same thing with uh, with Street Fighter. Like, they just started dropping Street Fighters all over the place. And it's like, you know... Yeah, I mean, Street Fighter 4 had, like, 
20 different editions. Like, yeah. They kept updating it. Yeah, like, it's just, you yeah. know, and then they got the, they can't bring PlayStation or Street Fighter V anyplace else but Sony. So it was like, yeah. okay, so we'll start redoing Street Fighter 2 and dropping that all over the place for people. And I don't know, it's a little, a little strange, but. My third and final prediction is Square will show up and they will actually show some footage of Final Fantasy VII. Um, wow, yeah. And, and, that goes, I so. and, and I know that goes against the PSX thing, but I kind of think that like Square is kind of stupid when it comes to things. Um, and I don't think that they'll save it. I think that they will show some footage and, and, and show it off because I feel like they want to get the ball rolling with this. I think people expected to see stuff at E3, and they didn't. Um, and I feel like, also, Square is a very Japanese company. Yeah. So for me, it, it, their stuff always tends to play a little better in Japan. Um, plus, role-playing games are huge in Japan. Like, Final yeah, Fantasy but, started in Japan and all yeah. that. And I feel like... That's the where we go. I think, yeah, you're right. There's going to be a lot of RPGs. Uh, yeah. The Tokyo Game Show, Nino Kuni 2 yeah. is going to be there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think they have a lot, lot of stuff to show off. I think they'll show some some footage there, and it'll be kind of, kind of interesting. So, I just want to see like Sephiroth like doing some serious damage. Like that's what I want to see because he's like my favorite character from <laughs> Seven. I'm, I don't know, man. I'm kind of iffy on the whole thing. I, I don't mm-hmm. know how excited I am about this game. I don't know. It's. I think the fact that like it's going to take forever before we see it, like, that's number one. Uh, number two, the three part thing has me a little concerned because mm-hmm. I'm just like, so I invest all this time in it and then nobody else does, yeah. and then they don't. You know what I mean? Like I invest money in it and then they <clears> stop. <throat> you know. I, I don't think they'll doing. stop. They, I think. Yeah, I think they'll keep going, but I think the problem's going to be it's going to take so long for them to come out. Like Episode 1 will probably come out in 2019, yeah, maybe, yeah. and then by the time Episode 2 comes out, PS5 is going to be out, and it'll be a cross-generation thing, and yeah. then they'll remaster Episode 1 for PlayStation 5, yeah, and it's to be rebuy nice. that, and it's... Yeah. Oh, awful. To me, it's like... <laughs> I, I know what they're... I, I get what they're doing. They're, they're basically remastered. They're, they're doing each disc. So... Final Fantasy was three discs long, and I really feel like that's what they're doing. They're, they're just going and saying, like, okay, here's disc one, here's disc two, here's disc three. I just wish they would just do the whole game. I wish that they didn't even say anything about it. I mm. feel like the real reveal was way too early. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I feel like they shouldn't talk about it at all. They should have just been working on it. Maybe they were just worried that it would leak, you know? But they, you know, they should have just made it back in the day. Instead of doing Final Fantasy thirteen and thirteen two and all, all that stuff, just forget thirteen. Just remake seven, yeah. and then Final Fantasy fifteen. That should have been Final Fantasy thirteen. Like Final Fantasy fifteen. I was talking about this the, the other night. Um, I feel like Final Fantasy fifteen is such a train wreck of a Final Fantasy. Like in terms of Final Fantasy games, mm-hmm. like. I get you wanted to try to do something different, but like, go like th- I feel like this is kind of a Monster Hunter game. Go make a Monster Hunter yeah. game. It doesn't feel like Final Fantasy no, to me. I not mean, at all, man. I, I've not actually played the main game. I played the demo, yeah. and but I was, from everything I've seen of it, and I've watched people play it, it just doesn't have that that feeling of not Final Fantasy. Not right? at all, man. Because you're just basically running around hunting. Well, like, yeah. There's three sections to the game. It's kind of like there's three different ways to play the game. Um, but, like, you're going off and you're hunting stuff, and it's like you go over and you find, like, there's a there's a monster terrorizing an area, so you go in and you take it. And it's just like, this mm-hmm. just feels weird. And I don't mind. I kind of thought the modern setting was kind of cool. Because um, I thought this would be kind of cool to see how, like, kings and princes and stuff like handle in a more modern era like they're driving cars and things like that like rather than horses and chocobos and airships and stuff and i was like that's kind of neat but i just felt like i don't know i felt it was just so displaced for me and and the whole way you play it was just very it felt across like the fighting felt like a cross between xenoblade chronicles and the, the theme and the vibe felt like very Monster Hunter esque to me, mm-hmm. and I think I don't know. I just I wasn't happy, and it, it's weird because people are are raving about it, 
But I also, like, I didn't like the fact that I, I should have watched a two-hour movie before the game starts. Yeah, yeah. Just to kind of get up to speed with what's going on. So, I, I feel like Seven is probably the better of... It just feels like when they went to Sony, they just got real discombobulated a little bit. Like, they did Seven, and Seven was great. Eight was good. Dude, nine was good. Yeah. But then they just started to get well, real the thing weird. is, ten, 10 was good and 12 was good. I think it was just 13 But onwards. I didn't like the fact that they did 10-2. No. And then they did, they, you know, they yeah. did Final Fantasy Eleven, which was should have never been a number. It's an online yeah. game. Like, why are you well, numbering what about? It? What about 14? That's online as well. That's the same but... thing. Like, you shouldn't be... They shouldn't get numbers in the main... Yeah, you're game. right. They should probably just say Final Fantasy Online. That's all it should have been. It should yeah. have been Final Fantasy Online. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and that should have been... Like, it makes no sense that you're... It has nothing I wonder, to do... I, I wonder if they'll ever reach Final Fantasy 20. Like, wouldn't that be weird? Well, I don't think they ever... Well, not in my lifetime. I don't think I'll see it. <laughs> unless they start cranking out games. But yeah. I also feel like right now... The games that are coming out, like on the Switch, and like the smaller games that they're doing, are much better than the big dramatic games that they're doing. I feel like they've lost their way. You know, like uh, Tokyo, what is it? Tokyo RPG Factory. They're yeah. doing phenomenal stuff. They really are. Yeah. And um, like, and then the, the the team that did Bravely Default, they're doing now this this Octopath game, and it's like. Which we should just jump into that now, where we're talking. Um, yeah. So my topic was basically. The Nintendo Direct, and I wanted to talk to you about what you thought about it and how you were. And yeah, so what's your what's your takeaway? How did, how did you feel about it? Um, so I went into the direct sort of expecting a few surprises, and we did get some. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the overall it was kind of an average direct. Okay, like I wasn't ecstatic about it. I I felt like there was a couple of moments like. So I went in with my expectations very low. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to get too super hyped about it, but I'm sorry, man. That that Doom and, and Wolfenstein. Oh yeah, I mean there are some real good. I I, uh, I would probably like give it. I would probably yeah. give. I would probably give it like an eight out of ten. Yeah. Like I would. It wasn't a, a grand slam. Um, I think people. I, just, I yeah. think people set their expectations way too high. The, you know why? You know why? Because it's 45 minutes long. People well, yeah. thought. That's way longer than the E3 presentation. They must have loads of really cool stuff to talk about. And they spent 15 minutes talking about Xenoblade. And it's like, whoa. Yeah, it like, 15 minutes. But it, was it, felt, it felt it like felt 15 long. minutes. It felt long. Yeah. Like, they went a little long on Xenoblade. They went a little long on Project Oct- Octopath Traveler. And they went a little long on Odyssey. I felt like if they would have cut those three back a little bit. Yeah. Odyssey, like, I love what I saw of Odyssey. Um, that... That's a game that knows it's a video game. Like yeah. they they don't take any like they don't sort of make it feel like oh this is a world with with rules and everything has to be a certain way. It's like if we want floating platforms that are there just because it's fun, they're gonna be there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it feels like it's gonna be all the better for it. The more I see about it, the more I'm hyped about it. Like I'm getting, yeah. I'm starting to get that excitement about me. I. Now, here's a question. Was your direct... You had a European direct, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you had a direct and I had a direct. Did you guys... Did they announce the uh, the, the Mario Switch? Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Like, you guys are getting that as well, the bundle and stuff. Yeah, but it, it's it's not a Mario Odyssey Switch. It's a, it's a, a normal Switch with some red Joy-Cons. That's it. It's a Mario Odyssey Switch. Nothing special about it. Okay. Literally, nothing uh, special. Well, there's nothing special about any of the switches that they put out as special editions no, yet. No, so the special ones are the pro controllers. That's what's special. Yes, and that's what I bought. Yeah. Speaking of, I bought the Xenoblade Chronicles one. Yeah. So I have another one that I bought. Um, I bought the Splatoon one. I mean, I had the original one. I bought the Splatoon one. I bought the Xenoblade Chronicles one. Mm-hmm. So I really want them to do a Mario one. I hope they do. Like, yeah, I hope man. last minute they're just like, hey, guys, here you go. I don't think it's going to happen because we're a month out. Yeah. So it's a shame. I really wish they would have, but whatever. I would like them to go back and make a Breath of the Wild one, honestly. Oh, man, I yeah. I would love that. But So I've I've taken to collecting the, the pro controllers. and so I wish I had the money to do that because uh, they are so here we so go. Gorgeous. Here we go. Come on, man. They're not on, that expensive. Bobby Big Bucks, come on. They're $20 more than a game. Yeah, 
I can't afford like you can't afford a game. No, I can't afford to buy controllers that are just controllers. They're not games. You can't play them. You can play with them. Yeah. You can play games with them, but I'd rather have like buy two games than one controller that is going to end up making my previous controller sit on the shelf like yeah, useless. Yeah, you know? I, well, I have a nice display rack that I put them in and I put them in my case, so it's a collector's thing for me. Yeah, I know, I know. And I would love to do it. If I yeah, could afford it, I would yeah. do it. I would get them all. Anyway. So, yeah, I bought that. Um, what else did I... Do? I was. How do you... Like, the Minecraft coming... What's your thoughts on that? I think that shows that the 3DS is not dead. Like, really? Really? Forget about Metroid for a second, mm -hmm. um, but Minecraft, that game is probably going to end up the best-selling 3DS game ever, because that's just what my, that's what Minecraft does, and all the kids that don't have Switches yet, they've all got 3DSs, and that's true. That is having true. Minecraft portable for them is going to be incredible, yeah, so I think it's going to... But don't you think that kind of hurts the Switch a little bit, in terms of like, like what you're saying, like, because parents might just buy their kids this and be like, here you go, you're happy now. Possibly, um, but I don't know. I mean, kids kids just love Minecraft, so yeah, they'll, I, they'll get it. On, they'll get it on whatever they can. I saw so. it at first, and I was like, "Oh my god, dude!" Well, my first reaction was like, "This is a little late to the game." Like, yeah, you're talking like this should have been on like when it hit the Wii U. I really expected them to do the 3DS like right after that, and they yeah. didn't, and it kind of shocked me. But whatever. Oh yeah, it seems a little bit too little, too late. But yeah. I don't think it will. I think it, it still also is. it also seems very bare bones. Like, I don't know how deep this game... It doesn't look as good. I mean, Minecraft doesn't look great as it is, but it doesn't even look as good as, like, Minecraft. No, but I think it'll be good enough. Yeah. Like, I mean, even Karina um, was saying that she's tempted to get it because, oh, wow. you know, we've got a Switch and we've got Minecraft on Switch, but mm -hmm. she feels like that's my thing, that the Switch is mine, and well, she, she can't... She knows her role, that's all. <laughs> so she... <laughs> So she could figure she's got her own 3DS, and yeah. she, you know if she could just play it on 3DS, I'm sure she'd enjoy that. So. She doesn't want to get yelled at by Toby. I, I understand. I'm not getting yelled at. She could play the Switch. Toby, I don't mind. Toby comes in. What are you doing, woman? Why are you touching my Switch? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I bought Tony a new Switch. I was like, yeah. well, I did say it to Tony because when um she wanted to cancel one of the the Switches that I had on pre order, yeah, and she's like, well, I'll just you know I'll just play your. I'm like, no. No, mm -hmm. like you get yeah. your own, man. I, like I'm not gonna stop playing so you can play. Like this is, yeah. Uh, I don't have any time. Well, all, and then at the time too, she was playing Fallout Four a lot too. So mm -hmm. she just thought in her mind, like I'll just keep playing Fallout Four, and you yeah. can play, and you can play Switch. Um, I love the Odyssey footage. That's that's true. Well, yeah. Okay, so Octopath Traveler. Do you have Dude. Any interest in this? All right, so I, I'm taking it. We're not gonna do what we're playing at the end oh, we could probably jump into what we're playing at the end well i was just gonna say the only thing i'm playing at the moment is more mario and the octopath demo okay well we can hold so on. we can hold on talking about the so we can we can okay all right, right we'll, we'll just, put a pin in this one and we'll move yeah. on um so that was a big one doom and wolfenstein like how does wolfenstein. that wolfenstein how does that <laughs> Like, does that excite you at all, or it it excites me mo more, like to the fact that a uh, third party a third party is actually putting effort into the Switch yeah. in a big way. In a big, you way. know, like, like FIFA eighteen, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, but then coming out with Doom, which is a PS4 game, mm -hmm. and Wolfenstein, that's not even out. It's gonna hopefully come out day and date with the other ones. Yeah, like that. That's amazing support yeah. and they've got skyrim as well so yeah. and i feel like um other developers like uh capcom having resident evil revelations one and two and uh la noir from rockstar this announcement makes those games look less meaningful yeah because it really it's does. like they're suddenly very low effort now mm. in comparison to bethesda and I think it's just nice that Bethesda has put their foot forward and stepped into the ring. And it's like, they obviously, the Switch can handle it. I mean, I've seen the comparison videos of Doom for PS4 and Switch. Mm -hmm. The footage is noticeably different, but to be expected for a handheld version yeah. on such a small little console, it still looks great. Yeah. So the fact that Wolfenstein's coming, that's like a, a brand new 
next gen or current gen game that's going to be on PS4 and Switch at the same time. And it's like the Switch is powerful enough to run it. Yeah. And it's proof. Well, There's no the, excuses. So here's the thing for me. All right. So I look at this and I go, Doom is a prime example of what I had been talking about all along. I will take a game on the Switch that is slightly lesser graphics, mm-hmm. but the gameplay footage, like all the gameplay stuff, is it's not, yeah, it's not nerfed in terms of anything else. But I could take it when the graphics are a little bit less because I get it that it's not as powerful. Doom is definitely a a show of that. Like, hey guys, here it is. What do you think? And then it's mm. like. This is amazing. Like, so I would definitely buy. I'm definitely buying Doom. I'm definitely buying Skyrim now because to me, it's like, hey, Bethesda came out day one before the Switch even was launched. Like in that initial, in that initial demo was yeah. was Bethesda with Skyrim, and everybody mocked it and everybody made fun and it was like, oh, they're going, they're just giving it Skyrim. And it's, dude, this announcement is huge like yeah. very big man it's and, so funny to me that bethesda is the company that's supporting the switch so I know, much i know yeah. so the rumor right now is that they're working with an engine that allows them to just basically go here's the game and then they have like a slider and it's yeah. and i'm dumbing it down essentially but yeah, that's ultimately yeah. what so it's a slider that goes okay here's what the pcu is on this particular thing Boop, and when they slide it to that, it just pulls out what it needs to in order to make it run on that console. So mm-hmm. it's, man, it's it, it's pretty awesome. Like, I told Tony about Wolfenstein, and she was like, because she really wanted to play Wolfenstein. Like, yeah. during E3, that was her, her thing. That was her excitement. Like, she's a fan of Bethesda after playing Fallout, and she got excited for it. So then I told her about this. She's like, oh, that's I'm just going to buy it on the Switch then. And I was like, okay. Like, that just blew me away. That yeah. Not even thinking about it. She's like, boom, I'm going to do it. And then I said to her, this is kind of funny. So you know how the argument is about trophies? Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, all the PlayStation people are like, I want trophies, I want trophies, I want trophies. So I told her, like, because when I told her about this, she goes, oh, maybe they'll bring Fallout 4 to the Switch. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's a good possibility. She's like, I, I totally buy it again. And I was like, you would? And she's like, I'd play it through again. And she's like, I would actually just play the game this time. She's like, because I got bogged down with the trophies last time. Yeah. Because she was trying to, she was trying to platinum it. Yeah. And I yeah, feel like it, when you platinum it, you play a different game. It like, does. It affects your enjoyment of the game. Yeah. She literally, like, she played the game to a certain point, right? Saved the game, paused it, played through, right? Beat mm-hmm. the game. The trophy popped. She stopped, went back to that save point. Went through again with the second fra- yeah. fraction, yeah. beat it, pop trophy, pop, boom, goes back to the third, and then goes through again with the third one. And it's like that's not enjoyable to me. That's not fun to me. But at the same time, the people that are trophy hunting, you either have to do that, or you have to beat the game once, go through and beat it again, and then beat it again. And that's that's not enjoyable to me. I don't want to play a game three times, a game mm-hmm. that big three times. No way, man. No thanks. So. I kind of was kind of, like, happy to hear her say that, like, because I know that there's other people that I've talked to that are like, well, if the game's coming on this one, this one, I'm getting this one because I want the trophies. And I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I would I would hope that that wouldn't be your deciding factor, but yeah. here she is. She's just like, I just want the game to be enjoyable. I just want to play it and enjoy it. So that's kind of that's kind of yeah. good. Um, but yeah, I was, I was shocked at the Bethesda came out with those two. And I had originally felt like at E3, I think that was my prediction on a couple of things, that Bethesda would announce Doom for, for Switch. Because yeah. I thought that that was probably the biggest no-brainer to go like, here you go. Now the rumor is, not the rumor, but they've announced it is, the single-player campaign is on the cartridge. Right. If you want the multiplayer, you have to download that off the eShop. It doesn't okay. cost you anything. It's free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll have to save that to your to your SD card. Which I really, me personally, I don't care because I won't even touch the multiplayer stuff. I'll just play the single player campaign and just have a good time with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know there's some people are going to probably be frustrated by that and, and annoyed. But the thing you- is, Bobby, I was looking at the eShop the other day and NBA, mm-hmm. uh, that's a game that requires an SD card yeah. to even download off the eShop. So yeah. I think a lot of games are going to be like that now. You just you just need an SD card. I was going to say that to you. What do you feel about that workaround? Because the, the idea is this, is that the, the cartridges cost what they cost. Yeah. And they can only hold so much. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's fine mm -hmm. as long as it's not like uh, half of the story mode is you have to download because if you can't afford an SD card or you haven't got the space or whatever, then it suddenly becomes a bit more of a hassle. Like, if it's a separate mode, like you say, multiplayer or some DLC type mm -hmm. stuff, like... I don't. I don't know. I don't mind about that. I feel much. like I feel like the SD cards are starting to become more reasonably priced at this oh, point. Definitely, and yeah. So, like a one twenty eight, you can get for like sixty bucks, something like that. Yep. Like I've seen them. I've actually seen them on sale for cheaper than that. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like this is very similar to like if you take we'll take GTA five because that's your game of choice. But if I take GTA five and I put it in my PS four, it's got to download a bunch of that game to the hard drive. You know. Actually, you know, I was thinking about GTA Five. We had a discussion the other week. We didn't, we didn't talk about how it will come. Like, because that game is massive. There's no way that will fit on a Switch cartridge. Like, oh yeah, a, lo a lot of that game you will have to download. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, it won't. I, I, I agree, completely. I agree wholeheartedly. So maybe, it, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it will never come because it's just too big. Well, if they, if they, oh, man, because what is it, sixty gig? At least sixty. I and think it's more. Clo I think it's closer to seventy now. And I think the cartridges are running, running what thirty, thirty two. Yeah. Well, no, they could do the same thing. They could do half and half. Yeah, but they can't separate online. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Why they can. Not? That's what Bethesda did. Know. But I don't know how much data online actually adds to the game because when the game first came out, it didn't have online straight away. And was it still sixty gig? Uh, it wasn't 60, but it was probably at least 50. Well, they could do something where they break the chapters up. Like, they say they build it. Rockstar's smart enough that they, yeah. can, they can do this. But if they were to, just hypothetically, they were to go and say, like, okay, we're going to put uh, 15, 15 chapters on the, on the cartridge, and then mm. the other 15 will be on the hard drive. That That's very possible. Maybe. I mean, like, they would definitely have to have the map in the yeah. world on the, yeah. on the disc or on the cartridge because you don't want to have to be bouncing back and forth because then you'll have these weird load times. It'll be back to yeah. the original GTA. Like, you go into one section and then you drive out. Oh, yeah, and it pauses and, for yeah, a yeah, minute. Yeah, it pauses loads, for a minute to yeah. load the screen. Um, how how likely, if L.A. Noir sells good, how likely do you think it is that we get, like, Red Dead Redemption? I don't know, man. I That would be such a good one to bring over. But... I, don't, I just don't have a feeling for that. I think GTA is more likely than Red Dead. I don't, I don't know why I feel that. I just feel like well, GTA is a... like the big. Well, let's be honest. You want GTA? Yeah. That's why you just. Well, yeah, and I want Red Dead as well. I mean, both would be amazing. How cool? I just... Okay, so how cool would it be, right? If you could do GTA, right? Yeah. You could, and it, it however it's set up, it's set up, whatever. But they have online, and then they offer crossplay. And you like you go to Drummy's house and he's playing and you're sitting there with your switch <laughs> and you're playing. Yeah, we cool. <laughs> kind of I wonder if they would add like Mario themed stuff or like Nintendo themed stuff into GTA. Like, would that ever happen? Could you imagine that? that? Could you imagine yeah. that? <laughs> like, because you could buy clothes. So it'd be like, neat. You wear like a, you buy yeah. overalls and a red shirt and stuff, and you run around. Yeah, that'd be kind of neat. Cool. That'd be kind of like neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be kind of neat. Well, I look at they did it with uh, Skyrim. Yeah, they gave you Zelda that's a stuff. Game. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, and it looks more realistic than like it's not cartoony or it doesn't feel out of where. Like you look at it, and you would go at first you oh, think Bobby. like, yeah, they they could just add Mario go karts into GTA. Could you imagine that? Could you oh imagine man, that? that'd be, be insane. You'd be giddy, man. You'd be like, this is the best thing ever, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't think mods would be available. That no. would definitely not be part of it, and I'd probably they probably eliminate the creator stuff. I think. Like, oh, they can't do that, Bobby. Well, that's that's the best thing about online. Because that's all you do online. Yeah, but it is legitimately the best thing about playing online. And maybe if they did like a story mode and that's all they did was a story mode, you could actually beat the game. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I promise you, Pinky promise, that yeah, if yeah, GTA be. comes to Switch, I'll beat the campaign. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, let's... Uh, let's jump into what we're playing hang on wait a minute we didn't talk about xenoblade oh well you drone you said he didn't okay so let's talk about it or how excited are you oh i i was excited i'm a little less excited why now. <laughs> because 
I think that the voice acting is awful. It's really bad. Mainly because the voices don't match the characters. Okay. And I love the voice acting in the first Zenblade Chronicles. That was one of my favourite things about it. And th- this time, it's, it's just I'm not feeling it. Plus, the UI takes over 90% of the screen. It's when very fighting, cluttered. When you're fighting. Yeah, it's very cluttered and it looks very complicated. Like Xenoblade Chronicles is it gets complicated eventually, but it I think it looks easier to jump into. This game is intimidating looking just yeah, with all the I stuff disagree. on the screen. I think like, I think the information that they're supplying on screen is actually better. Um Do you think? Yes, because I feel like it helps you in the flow of the battle. Because you know you've played like I mm. think I here's my thing. I think the statement you just made scares mm. people away from actually playing the game if they've never played it before. What I feel is this: I feel like playing the other ways was more difficult because you didn't know the health meter of your friends like during combat. This is constantly staying up there. You would have to kind of try to look over at their health bar, but if they if they panned out of the camera view, you didn't know that they were in danger. Mm-hmm. This now keeps the constant flow up there and lets you see at all times what's going on. You can also see, like, is it time for combo attacks there? Like, I feel like it's much more user-friendly now than the other ones. Uh, yeah, I, don't played, know. I mean, we haven't played it, we haven't used yeah. it, but I yeah. I kind of welcomed that when I saw that screen. I was like, look, it, that game can get complex. It's better to have all that information at your fingertips so you can, while you're playing, look at it and get it going and know what's going on. I like that the yeah. combat is still the same, where it can be linked together. Yeah, so yeah. Like that. The worlds seem massive. Yeah. And I'm happy. It's very pretty. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's gorgeous, man. I yeah. The voice acting didn't bother me that much. I don't... Like, which characters in particular are you talking about? Mainly the big monster that you... The friendly one that you can oh, ride I can on. I care less about that idiot. Like... That guy, like, he's like Herbert the Pervert or something. Like, <laughs> he, 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 his voice is so, like, soft compared to the huge monster that he really is. Like, it does not match up. Like, yeah, there's whatever. a real disconnect there. It is what it is. I'm not, eh, whatever. I, I don't know. I'm just whatever. I, I, I liked, I liked it. I liked everything mm-hmm. I saw about it. I feel like it just went too long. That was my only Yeah, I think they ex- tried to explain the story and everything a bit yeah. too much. Like, just do yeah. a direct... Well, here's what I felt like. They mm. should have just done what they did. Because when they went up to the certain point, it was like, okay, done, move on. And then they went longer. What they should yeah. have done is went up to that point and said, if you'd like to have more information about this game, tune into our YouTube channel after the direct and we'll have a, mm-hmm. an exclusive sneak peek. into. For, and you would have gotten most of those people just going there to, to watch it. Yeah, the release date shocked me, though. December 1st. Like whoa, it's actually coming out this year. Oh, dude, come on! Only you got, only you and Alan Paxton thought it was going to be delayed. The two I don't know. Brothers. I'm gonna. I, I feel like I'm gonna wait for a review on this one. I'm not. I'm not. Dude, the, they've they've earned. My, they've earned my my support. Yeah, but Xenoblade Chronicles was. Chronicles X though. Like I wasn't feeling that one. So that's because the storyline wasn't there. And, yeah, you know what I mean, like you and I both loved the first one. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Love the so the one. second one, I think, why we didn't love it as much is it just felt like a disconnect because yeah. there was no real storyline there. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is back to the basics, and that gets yeah. me excited. Like I'm ready for that one. So I'm, I'm like, sign me up, man. I'm ready for it. The only question yeah. I have to you is, do you think two things? I, I, it, I think because I never beat the game. Did you beat the game? No, not the first one. I'm thinking I might just go watch. Like, go watch the ending. Yeah. Watch the ending. Because <laughs> I'm curious about two things, and I just don't know if maybe it's spoilers to the ending of the original, and that's my problem. Is I wonder if Shulk is going to show up in this one, and I wonder if the Minando is going to show up in this one. Because mm, they haven't talked about know. either at all. I don't think they will. You don't think they'll show up? No, I, no, I have a feeling that everything's just separate. Because I also wonder, like, how far disconnected from the original like where in the path does it does it line up you know what i mean i feel like it feels to me more like a spiritual successor like a final fantasy game yeah where final fantasy 2 isn't technically part of one yeah if that was the case see and that's what i thought at first i thought like okay that's the way it is and i thought maybe the monando should have been like the connection to each game yeah 
Like, as you move forward, the men, like, in, in Final Fantasy games, Sid is the character that shows up in every game. Yeah. I and you that, have you have swords. Like, yeah. it's a common theme to have the same, like, a mass immune yeah, sword. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. that appears in every Final Fantasy. Yeah. Like, Yeah, exactly. So it'd be kind of cool yeah. to have, like, this sword, the Monando, show up in each iteration of the game. But I love that you call it the Monando. What is it? The Monado. Monardo. Monando. Why do I call it? I do that. I've done that forever. <laughs> I've done that forever. The Monando. I like whatever, man. I, it is. What Sounds it is. like a pizza place. Hey, Monando's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Toby, what are you playing? Uh, so yeah, I checked out the Project Octopath Traveler demo, and it is like, oh, it's so good. It is so so good. Like. It looks gorgeous. Like the graphical style was very unique. I think they described it as like pixel, like two D pixel art made three D, mm-hmm. and that's what it is. Yeah. And the music really stood out to me as phenomenal, especially on the because uh, there's like eight different characters, and in the demo you can play a little bit of two different characters. And if you play the woman character, I can't remember her name. She's a dancer. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the music in like the there's a little tavern that she works in and stuff and it's it's so good it's like this little jazzy sort of track brilliant um but yeah it's it's really interesting the combat is very cool it's quite straightforward but it's very engaging you know there's not uh there's not too much to it but i don't know i mean obviously it will get more complex over time but what was really cool about the the girl's story is that she had the ability to, uh, I think it's called allure or something. It's like you can basically entice villagers or other NPCs to join your party Mm -hmm. and you can take them into a dungeon with you and you can sort of call on them for help and they have their own sort of abilities and weapons and stuff. You can also sacrifice them too, right? So I could just be like, you idiot, come here. Yeah, because it doesn't matter if they die. Yeah, you go die for me. Like, you just go. Yeah, and uh, the story. Take one for the team, bro. Yeah, the story on on the uh, the girl's story. I, I wish I remember that. I don't just keep calling it the girl, but her story was so cool because there's there's a little bit of voice acting in it, and like the villain in her story, like almost straight away, you feel complete and utter hatred for him for the way that he's treating her. So, did you play both storylines or no? I I watched someone play the girl storyline, oh, and okay. I play I played the guy's storyline. Okay, okay. So, um, but yeah, like you feel so much hatred for this character like more so than in like films that i've yeah. seen like th- it's written so well it's really really well done and and the guy's storyline he's more of just the generic knight type character he's mm-hmm. got a mysterious past and you know he's living in this village protecting it and there's like a band of thieves that comes along and but what's cool about him is that he can challenge people to a duel like anyone any npc uh, so you just go up to him and you can say, "Oh, fight me!" Yeah. And it's just you—you you get experience from it and stuff. Like, I don't know. It's just a really interesting game. I'm really into it. The uh, man, it's I, I'm I I haven't got a chance to really play a lot of it. So I started the beginning's real slow because it, there's a lot of dialogue and there's yeah. like story unfolding. And I was playing the male character as well, mm-hmm. and so I haven't really gotten to the point where I can actually play the game. It's a lot of just the talk stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also have been playing um, Metroid: Samus Returns. Yeah, that game is amazing. Yeah, really, and that's not just me just talking nonsense. Like, and I know people are like, "Oh, well, that should have became on the on the Switch." You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Like to make that comment, you're you're so wrong. It's not even funny. Like, this is the first game, Toby, in so long that I've actually had the 3D on and playing yeah the depth the range of depth between samus and the back world and it just all feels alive and yeah. like you're playing in like metroid like when you fight the metroid bosses and stuff like they'll come swooping from the back back and you see them come flying forward and stuff and it's just like wow it is so well done like this game if you have a 3ds you have to go buy it it is Phenomenal! Like, if you're a Metroid fan, and you're going like, uh, I'm just going to wait for it to come on Switch, you're a fool. Go. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to come to Switch. I don't think it's not coming. I don't think it's coming to Switch at all. Yeah. People need to get off that wagon, because it's not happening. This thing is so good. 
so good, man. I love, it looks great. The music is great. The map system, everything, dude, the new attack, like the melee attack, it just yeah. becomes like ingrained in you. You're using yeah. it all the time, man. You're taking that arm cannon, smacking them in the head, and then blowing them away. It is so fluid, so good. Um, that I'm playing NBA 2K18. I just started, yeah. uh, you know, playing around with that yesterday. Uh, got into the creator mood. I, I created my character. Um, I started to play a little bit. I was just have this cool thing, dude, where you can play like kind of like NBA Jam, but it's but it's not NBA Jam at all. It's like basically the game, but it's um, like street basketball, and you pick three characters of your choosing from mm-hmm. every like different eras, all that stuff. Like, I had Michael Jordan playing with uh, Stephon Curry and, like, Dwayne Wade. Like, that was my... I had a three-on-three. You could do one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three. It's just really, really cool. Um, How does it look on Switch? It looks good, dude. I was actually blown away. I haven't done any comparison videos at all. I was taking it as, here's the Switch, this is what Mm -hmm. it is. There's some things that don't look that great. In the creator mode, because it's up close to you, yeah. You pick it. The hairstyles look a little like the crew cuts don't feel like crew cuts. They feel a little off. Yeah. Um, but like the hairstyles, when you're actually picking hair, it looks mm. pretty decent. I was blown away with how good it looks. And yeah. because I was looking at it from the perspective of, wow, th- I had to keep saying, like, this is on the Switch. This is on the Switch. Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't, because I thought it was going to look worse. I really did. I thought it was going to look a lot worse than it does. Um, I'm so, always surprised at how good basketball games look. Anyway, oh like, man, it, it does. It yeah. looks really cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually dive in and start playing. I'm thinking I'm gonna stream some of it too. I want to play some of it and, and let people just get because <clears throat> I think there's a lot of questions with this game. A lot of people mm-hmm. are curious. I was also blown away. There's three versions of the game in the eShop. Yeah, <laughs> that, that surprised me. Well, that's because they have the coin. Like you can buy because when you do the creator mode or the you know the, not the creator. When you're doing like, to create a character. Yeah. Even even so, like you can build your team off of cards, and you take that money. You could buy cards and stuff. So they're giving you like a boatload of money up front. Then. What is in the hundred and twenty pounds version? Well, of that's what I'm saying. Game. There's like there's there's extra like gear for Shaq because Shaq is in this game. Like he's the he's the character. So there's. It's insane. I, I, it's insane. I agree, but you there know what? There's literally people... no content you can add to this game to make it worth that much. For, for people that play the game that particular way. And what I mean by that particular way, what I mean by that is there is a version of the game where you open up packs of cards and you get players. Well, you need money to buy those packs of cards. So there's what happens is this. There's, in, there's in-game purchases. So if I'm the type of person that buys a bunch of packs, when you buy that $140 thing... You're actually, it's a deal. You're getting more coinage for your money than that if I was. insane. So here's the thing if I spent $150 on a game, right? And you bought the yeah. $60 game. Yeah. And you decide that you want to then go spend another $90 to get the coins to buy to, to buy the packs, I get the better. I would have gotten a better value. I hate it. Any Anything blind packs in a game like that. It's a big thing with sports games right now. It's a big oh, thing. Man. Madden is that way. Like Madden does that a lot. I think FIFA even started doing it last year or whatever. Like it's basically what you're doing is is you're building a team based off the blind pack cards. So I don't. I hate man. I'm not. This a fan is of it. severe. This is severely depressing. Like I, listen, that's just one. But here's the thing: it's only one portion of the game. It's one style of the game. You only have to play that way. You can. Yeah, go I in, know. I know it's optional, but it's like. It's just evil. Well, it's pure evil. It's just people... Toby, they wouldn't do it if people didn't buy it. Yeah, but people are weak. That's like it, It's like gambling. Yeah, but people... people open, the, opening up packs like that feels good. Yeah, and I don't but, blame anyone for doing it. I'm just saying that they're preying on people's inability to... They're a business. Not, yeah. They're a business. I don't know. Gonna, look, it, it, the thing of it is, is it's, it's a, there's, a, there's a good portion of the population that like to play that way. And they're just offering it to them, and that's fine. I feel like it's okay. No, that's not fine, Bobby. It's not. What do you mean it's not fine? I disagree. I disagree. If they're taking are... candy from babies, <laughs> stop it. 
what I'm saying to you is it's only one section of the game. Yeah. And, and there's people that play that and want to play that way. Let them play that way. I'm Remember not going to play that way. Used to used to come with all the characters. They do, you... but that's to see. You're taking away from it. It does. I don't have to. I'm not doing that to unlock characters. I'm doing that to unlock characters in the fantasy games. If I go and I play a league, a league play, all the players are there. They're all on the so, team. So they've they've made a mode where you need to buy characters randomly. It's like a fantasy. Oh. It's like fantasy baseball or fantasy football. Oh, it's, it's painful. So what it is is like you open up a pack of cards, right? And there's maybe 10 players in that pack, right? So I have to then build a team off those cards. Can you what, get duplicate players? Yes. But what you can oh, do is you can God. take their... But you can take their... <laughs> listen to me. You take their abilities and merge them. And they become a better right. player. Because yeah. they're different levels too. Like, my oh. little, obviously... It's getting worse for me. It's <laughs> getting stop. worse. Whatever. People... people <laughs> I'm not playing uh, that mood, okay? I'm, I'm just telling you me. it's there. That makes me very happy. I don't that you're play not that mood. That. I don't play that mood. I play different, you know, I play like league and season. There is also the single player campaign where you can actually like you create your character and then you try to work them through the ranks and stuff. Do you That's, have to buy blind packs no, to upgrade your skills? No. No. That's what I'm saying. It's only one mode. I'm not trying to mm. make like you're you're making it sound like the whole game is based so around. Is it online multiplayer? Not, yes. The uh the fantasy league yes. though. Oh. oh that I think no no no. Mm, I think you can. I think you can take your team you built and then go play oh. other teams. Oh <laughs> some people that could afford to buy all these packs. They keep you ranked in your ranks. Oh man. You're not going right. and playing like someone that has a super team. Because you can also you can also... Well, I know they do this in Madden. I haven't got too deep into this one. But, like, in Madden, if mm. I have, like, multiple players, I can put them on the auction block. And people can buy them from mm-hmm. me. And then I get that money. And I can take that money and go out and do other things. I remember when Diablo 3 was announced to have, uh, like, an auction house mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. People could uh, get loot and then sell it at the auction house. And people were in an uproar about that. But like, if that happened now, like, there'd be no complaints. No complaints, and that's and, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. Like, people complain, but then other people go buy it. If you don't yeah. like it, don't don't feed into it. And that's mm. but anyway. Regardless, that's that's I've been playing that. Um, dip in, uh, How far like, are you into rabbits? Um, made it to the third world. Yeah, that's where I am now. I, I beat the third world the other day, and I'm going back and getting 100 percent on all the other levels. Well, that's why that I, I actually went back. Remember how we were talking the one time I was struggling on that one? Yeah, I went back, dude. He rinsed rabbit, it, didn't you? Rabbit Mario is. Oh, he's a murderer. He does that slide. <laughs> he does yeah. that slide and it rumbles all around. I'm like, yeah, I like this guy, dude. Yeah, man. That's what happened. Like I started to look at, it and I was like, you know what? I need to bring Mario Rabbit out, and I, I actually started doing some damage with him. Yeah, Peach is good, and Mario Rabbit are good, but I don't like the fact that I can't take Mario out. I know that annoys me as well. Like Mario like, has I, to be. I would in the rather party, have like... Mario Rabbit, Peach Rabbit, and and Peach. Like they would yeah. be that would be my team that I use. Yeah. I hate that I have to use Mario. Mm-hmm. Piece of garbage. Anyway. Is that all? That is all. That is all. Thank you guys for watching us on YouTube.com forward slash Nintendo Gurus. Be sure to check us out over at Patreon, Patreon.com forward slash Make Us Better. Uh, check out our Discord. That is where a huge portion of the community is hanging out now and talking. It's a lot of fun. Go over there, get in there. Join the chat, join the conversation. Every actually everything we do is broken out into separate channels. So if you just want to talk about this podcast, you can bang in and go talk about this podcast. If you want to talk about Toby's video, which will be up Tuesday, yeah, awesome. his newest Patreon video, you can go in and check that out. You want to talk about if we were a Nintendo, you want to do my Nintendo talk series. It's all broken out in different channels. Then we have our general conversation that goes on. Um, so go check us out over there. Uh, the the actual. Audio portion of the podcast is available over on iTunes, dayspace.com, over on Google Play. So check us out there. That is all. Peace out, Preston. Later, masturbators. Do you know someone posted that in, in in the comment on the, to me one of my videos? Did they? They signed, <laughs> they signed off the comment with later. And I'm like, is that Toby? Is that, is that Toby with an alias?
Uh, is he catchphrase? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs>